The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you by Rafter P Construction. Stick around to learn more about Rafter P's design build process and of course, the biggest deer in the world. Well howdy everybody, my name is Keith Warren and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. Where today we're in Folsom, Louisiana visiting Boom Whitetails and we'll show you some of the prettiest whitetail deer in Louisiana. The white-tailed deer is America's favorite big game animal, and white-tailed deer farming is the fastest growing segment in the American agriculture industry. Our program's mission is to dive into the world of deer farming and discover why tens of thousands of Americans compete to create the biggest bucks in the world. And by the biggest bucks, we don't just mean the size of the antlers. The financial investment opportunities produced even on small parcels of rural land will blow you away. Join me as we discover how whitetail genetics, deer auctions, animal husbandry, and so much more drive the deer farming industry. My name is Keith Warren, and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. My name is F.J. Caminita. I'm with Boom Outdoors Whitetail Farm, Folsom, Louisiana. We're a family owned and operated deer breeder operation. We have 23 pens, I believe it is. And right now, counting fawns, we have right at 60 deer. My brother Lance Parrish is the owner. Lance is handicapped, has to have round the clock care. The way we came about the name Boom is Lance doesn't talk. And we, a few years back, had taken Lance on a handicap hunt. And when that gun went off, he hollered out, boom, just as loud and clear as you ever wanted to hear. And he just kept hollering, boom, boom. So that's how we came up with the name Boom Whitetails. Keith's been out here twice before. We had some nice deer, 140, 150 class deer. Since he's been here, we've kind of changed our breeding strategy. We now are getting much bigger deer, prettier deer. We're really satisfied with it. Our does have improved, the quality of our does, quality of our bucks. Also, the last time Keith was here, the boys were much younger. Now they're, they're 17 years old, they've got full beards. <laughs> they still fool with the deer. They're very active with the deer. I can, I can go off now and leave and I don't have to worry about things so much because they know what to do and how to take care of things. My name is Nico Caminita. I've got a twin brother, his name is Lance. We ain't the same. I, I like to get out and work outside and go hunting or fishing, do something fun. But unlike me, Lance, Lance wants to be a radio announcer. You ought to hear his radio voice. Where tonight, your Coats and High Fighting Lions take on their crosstown rivals, the Dismal Wolves of St. Paul's. <laughs> he's, he's got a radio voice on him. They are night and day in just about everything they do, but they are each other's best friends. I also have my grandson, Frankie, here with us today, and he comes and helps every now and then. We get him out here. It is a family deer farm. The thing I like about deer farming more than anything is that it is a lifestyle. You get to do it with your family. So when I come out here and I see the Caminita family, I watch them all. And I mean, they all love it, they're all involved, and they've all built this business. So Boom White Tails, I'm gonna tell you the reason why it's called Boom. It's because this dude right here. This is Lance. Okay, um, hit it, boom. Um, boom. 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 Let me tell you, when you come out here, you, you can meet Lance, you're gonna meet the whole family, and uh, you're gonna see some beautiful deer, but let me tell you something. For a guy that's in the condition that Lance is, white-tailed deer are therapeutic. I mean, they're therapeutic. You love looking at them, you come out here when the weather's nice, and look at them, and it makes you feel good. Right? Boom! <laughs> you're awesome, Lance. Thank you for having us out. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by 
MVP Whitetails, Dr. Ray Favero's Whitetail Genetics, UVC Power Sports Tractors and Outdoors, Rafter P Construction. For more videos on deer farming, check out the Deer Farming Channel on YouTube. The market here in Louisiana is really good. We, we, we sell out every year everything that we have, but we do need more breeders. We're still upside down in this state as far as supply and demand. Otherwise, the market's good and there's plenty of room for more breeders to, to get involved. What's happened in Louisiana is that the preserves getting all these great deer, like the deer right here from Boone Whitetails, They've improved the genetics to the point that these deer here in Louisiana now, especially on these preserves, they rival deer any place in the country. As far as the future, it's definitely moving in the right direction. We have lots of new preserves opening up, it seems like almost every day. The breeder operations that are here are selling out with the rate that the preserves are opening up. I don't see it ending anytime soon. It's, it's gonna be really good. Louisiana is about as good a state as you're going to ever find to grow white-tailed deer and to be able to profit from it, and you can do so on a small piece of property. As a deer farmer, you got to know how to work your deer. You got to know how to be a vet sometimes, because it's going to happen. It don't matter what you do, how tame the buck is. King out there, he was tame. He still had something happen to him. Okay, we've got a buck outside that's got an injured foot. And what we're getting ready to do is go out there, tranquilize him, put him to sleep, and see if we can't figure out what's wrong and get him doctored up real good. Extra cartridge. Let's go get Keith and get this done. It normally takes about eight to 10 minutes to actually be able to see it affecting the animal and within 12 to 15 minutes, they're almost all the time out. He's gonna be asleep just like you're asleep when you have surgery. So that's an extremely humane way to medicate or either knock them down and be able to handle them with a dart gun. Okay, he's already laying down on the ground. I see his head still up a little bit, so we just got a little bit longer to wait. But he's, he's steady. His head steady going to the ground. He's having a hard time holding it up. Take your good nap right now. He's got a pretty messed up foot right here. So we're gonna clean it up, doctor him up, wrap it up, and give him some antibiotics. Put a little nitrofurazone on here and uh, see where we go from there. A little betadine here, betadine, it's antiseptic. Now we're gonna put some nitrofurazone on this. So the antibiotic salve. I don't know how he did that. He, these jokers get into all kinds of stuff out here. Okay, we're gonna give him six cc's of new floor sub Q right here. For his antibiotics. And I'm gonna touch up the end of his antler with a little bit of Luma Shield. Now I'm gonna give him his reversal and we're gonna give him a few minutes to wake up and move on about his day. He's up, he's fine, he looks good, he's walking around. He's headed off to the rest of the deer. We'll keep an eye on him over the weekend. And Monday, I'll call the vet to get him to come back out here and, and we may have to do this again. This time it'll be in the barn and uh, see what the vet thinks. But for now, he looks okay. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by Big Time Whitetails and Exotics, L.E. Fence, Record Rack Deer and Elk Feeds, UVC Power Sports Tractors and Outdoors, and by New Dart. Deer and Wildlife Stories will be right back. 
Closed captioning is brought to you by Advanced Deer Genetics. These are the yearlings, right? Yearlings and I guess some two-year-olds in here? Yearlings and two-year-olds, Okay, yeah. I can tell you right now, these deer are much bigger than they were the last time I was out here. That's right. And they're very pretty and very typical, and that's what I like. Yeah. So how many you got in here total? Uh, there's six. There's three yearling bucks and three two-year-old bucks out okay. here. Okay. What's the deal with that wild guy right there? <laughs> <laughs> He's a nutcase. That is a Heisman son on a plenty wide doe. And He's nuts. <laughs> yeah, okay, so uh, as you watch him, let me tell you something, that's a, that's a nice deer. He's got a great pedigree, but you notice how he is just, he's just wild. I mean, he, wild. he really is, he's wild. Some deer, I mean, deer are like people, as I say. I mean, some deer are more gentle than others. Some deer are just kind of wild, yep. okay? All these other guys in here are really calm, except for that Heisman buck. All right, so tell me about these other guys in here. The other yellow tag there, 2032, mm -hmm. that is a Snake Eyes son. Snake Eyes is from Lone Hollow. He's uh, Snake Eyes over Plenty Wag, and I really like his look. He oh, looks yeah. a lot like his daddy at the same age. Yeah, yeah, and he's two. He's two. Yeah, okay. He's two. Snake Eyes, okay. Snake Eyes. All right, now, you know, the, the, your pins are huge. I mean, yes. they really are, your pins are huge. I tell people that when you're when you're breeding deer, you don't need to have giant pens, but it sure helps. I mean, it, it, it helps. And I mean, these deer, other than that Heisman buck, I mean, these deer are calm and they like this little plenty of grass, plenty of right. shade, and they love it. So tell me about these other guys. All right, the white tag is king. Mm -hmm. He's a bottle fed, he's pretty tame. He is Da Sancho over Texas T Monarch Classic. That was on show. So that goes back to John True. That goes back to John True. That's okay. correct. Big Rat Ranch. All right. And, uh, and he's got a nice wide look. I know he's not quite standing up real tall, but I really think next year will be his come out year. Mm -hmm. Well, you sell your deer at three, right? Yes. Most of them. Most of them at three. Okay. Okay. So uh, tell me about these yearlings then. The yearlings. The really nice looking 10 point there is King George. Oh, that's a heck of a deer. That's right. I like yeah. him. Max mm -hmm. Bowl over Wooded 217 is King George. We put him on Plenty Wide Gladiator 727. And then the other little fella there that's kind of going wide is a Warhorse son. Okay. He's Warhorse over Big Rack Ranch's Ace of Blades over Plenty Wide. Mm, so you've got great genetics in every one of them. Yes. Your deer are a whole lot bigger now than they were when I was here last time. Much I mean, better. they're. They're much better. We've upped our genetics, we've upped what we're doing, and it's showing and paying off. Okay. Uh, something I want to point out is that the deer density in his pens is uh, amazing. I mean, he doesn't have many deer. You have too many deer in your pen, you can have some problems. I mean, health issues. And so, health issues, that's yeah, right. So when you wind up reducing the number of deer that are on the landscape, the deer are healthier. Just simple as that. Absolutely. I mean, whether it's, whether it's in the buck pens like this, or whether it's in doe pens. I mean, sometimes your doe pens only have a doe and a fawn maybe in there. Yeah, we break them up into small groups of two or three per pen. Mm -hmm. And that's how we keep it until they finish, till they wean their babies. Okay. I want to point out that Louisiana, in my opinion, if somebody was going to ask me this for the top three states that deer farming is good in, I would say Louisiana has to be one of the top three states. We have a ton of preserves and the demand is really good for bucks. You don't have any trouble selling your buck. If I decided to breed more and get more, I, I wouldn't have any trouble selling them. Right, right. They'd be gone in a hurry. Well, that's the reason why, I mean, every time I've come here, you sold them. Sold them. <laughs> what a problem. I have guys that like to buy them when they're nine months old and turn them loose in their preserve and, and wait on them to grow up. Mm -hmm. They get them for a lot less money. They get more deer for the money. And if they lose one or two, they really hadn't lost a whole lot mm -hmm. because of the price. Right. And that's why for a while I didn't have any bucks here to show. So we had to start keeping some to let people see what our genetics and what our your does are like. doing. They're, yeah. so they're looking at the bucks, these the, bucks right here, so you can see the quality of his does. So we know what our does are doing. Right, yeah. right. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by Union Hill Whitetails the North American Deer Registry, New Dart, and the North American Deer Farmers Association.
For more videos on deer farming, check out the Deer Farming Channel on YouTube. Now some great information on fencing from our friends at LE Fence. Hey guys, this is Ron with LE Fence here. Uh, what we're doing right now is we're putting an overhead up in this gate area solely because we're trying to hinge the gate off of the side without the brace. Reason we're doing this is because we've got the trees right here and we don't want to take any of the space and take the trees out of here. We want to leave the tree coverage for the deer. So in order to do this, we got to raise the pipes up a little bit, give about two feet of clearance over our gate, and then weld a horizontal pipe between the two uprights. In doing so, we're going to be able to hang the gate off of the far post, and that's going to take all the pressure off of the single post and distribute it through the overhead and the brace. That way we can fold the gate open and shut, and we don't have to worry about a sagging post. So if you ever need a solution on how to hang a gate but you don't have all the room for the brace, if you can do an overhead in there, you'll be good to go. So thanks a lot, guys. Okay, so these deer were sold last December, seven months ago, mm -hmm. okay? And these deer are going to preserves, and we'll tell you in a moment what they do with them, okay? But how do people come out and buy them in December? Tell, tell somebody how that works. <laughs> he, he had no clue what they looked like. Um, but you built a reputation, Yeah. and they got the bloodlines, and so he came out here and he bought them? And uh, he, he, based on bloodline, is how he bought them. And he had no clue what they looked like. I know he's going to be really happy. Yeah, I guarantee he's he going to be happy. But the, you yeah. have stepped up your game from the last time we were here. We have. Clearly. Okay, so who's that guy right there? He is really, really gentle. I can just tell. I mean, he's calm as he can be. Is that Striker you're talking about? Is that Striker? That's old Striker. <laughs> Striker's five years old now. Look at him. Okay, well, the last time I was here filming, we had Lance over in that pen, I want That's to say, that. over there. Right there. Bottle feeding him his last... Bob. That's okay. right. But he, why would you want to bottle feed a breeder buck like that? In that case, the mama rejected him, so we, we didn't have much of a choice okay. but to bottle feed him. Otherwise, if it's a really, really good genetic buck, something that you plan on keeping here a long time, mm -hmm. you might want to bottle feed him and keep him and, calm. And keep him calm while because he's going to be here a long time. Right, right. And uh, that way you can get an eye on him, you can look at him, and, that's right. and if He's you easy. do need to dart him, medicate him, or sedate him, you can do that it's easily. Easy. So, now are you selling Striker? No, Striker. I was going to say, there's no way that y'all are going to sell They run that. me off the hill if I try to, <laughs> try to sell Striker. Who's that guy right there? That oh, is pretty. Monarch Express Sun mm, okay. over a Bullwinkle Doe. Okay. And then we have a Solid Core, Maxpo Solid Core Sun. That's Hardcore's brother. That's Hardcore's womb brother. Yep. Plenty wide Gladiator 727 Doe. Okay, so who's that other guy? We have a Storm Express over a Supercell Doe. Storm Express, okay. And the Storm line comes from Eddie Ray up north, doesn't it? That's right. Okay, and Express clearly from James Butler and the High Roller deal. Man, you got some stout pedigrees. It's no wonder he bought these things basically sight unseen. Right. Yeah, right. wow. The last one is J5's Hang them high. Okay. Wow. And he's over a Pablo II dove. And J5 is out of Texas, Heath Jower. Heath so, Jower. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, I mean, hang them high. Well, Heath had uh, high heat. And high heat. He, he yeah. had high heat and a lot of other big deer. But you can clearly see that what happened, the borders got shut down years ago where you couldn't bring deer in from Texas and Louisiana. But Texas deer will live in Louisiana. Yes. That's the thing. But you couldn't bring them in unless you brought it in in a semen straw. Okay, and so they brought it in in a semen straw and bred, and here's what they've gotten out of it. Now, do you plan on continuing AIing these deer? Yes, building the quality, building the does. The does are a huge part of us continuing to get these kind of bucks looking this way. Okay, I wanna point this out. I mean, the does, I mean, we go to the doe pens and there's hardly any, any pressure in these doe pens at all. They're calm. There are hardly any deer in the pens. That's the reason why they're calm. I mean, they and they're healthy, healthy, healthy. There's a lot of people that have overcrowded pens, in my opinion. That overcrowded pen, uh, those deer are not as healthy as deer like this. Okay, mm -hmm. but the does that you look at are sisters and mothers to these guys right here. And so these guys are built off the doe side of the pedigree. That's right. Just keep that in mind. So, you know, while he shops for semen or while a deer farmer shops for semen to be able to put it in these does, he's shopping for semen 
that matches up with the pedigrees that he's looking for. But I can look at the pedigrees, I talk to them, and I know when I see the jump in quality between what it was back then and what it is now. And I can only imagine three or four more years from now, it's gonna even get better. Now, let's talk about preserves, okay? And what happens is these preserves are big pieces of a high fence property that people have built in Louisiana. The reason why they've kind of followed the lead of Texas. I mean, Texas has a lot of high fence preserves and hunters had shot all the trophy genetics out. So what do you do? Okay, you come to a deer farmer like FJ and you wind up buying these does and buying these bucks and you put in these preserves and you create a quality preserve where you have quality animals. So that's right. Yeah, so if somebody wants more information about coming to Boom Whitetails, give them a phone number and contact information. You can call me, FJ Caminita, 985-373-1706, Boom Outdoors, Whitetail Farm. And uh, I'm telling you something, the, the best thing about this, the deer are great, okay, the property is great, but the family's great. I always believe in dealing with people that you feel comfortable with, that you trust, and you're not going to find somebody better in the state of Louisiana to deal with than FJ Caminita and his family, and I sincerely mean that. Thank you. I mean, y'all have made a very good name for yourself, and it's obvious by the demand that people want for your deer. Uh, of course, they sell you deer, but they can tell you how big your pins ought to be, where they ought to be. I mean, they can coach you because you need somebody, if you're gonna start a deer farming business, you need somebody basically to, to mentor you so you make the right decisions. Mm -hmm. He's the right guy. <laughs> all right, thank you for having us out. Thank you, I thank appreciate you. it. And That's folks, right. thank y'all. We, uh, uh, just to let you know that if you like what you're seeing on today's program, you can head on over to the Deer Farming Channel where we've got, I mean, we got the old shows that we did from you yeah, a yeah. long time ago. <laughs> yeah. But the Deer Farming Channel on YouTube, check it out. I mean, we've got dozens and dozens and dozens of videos all about deer farming. This is FJ Caminita. My name is Keith Warren, and we'll see you next time. Okay, so you've got property, and you're wanting to build. Maybe a barn dominium, maybe deer facilities, or maybe a badass lodge. Well, you've got to check out Rafter P Construction. Rafter P Construction is the leading design-build contractor across the state of Texas. Specializing in quality farm and ranch design-build projects, Rafter P Construction encourages their customers to be very hands-on, incorporating your input into every aspect of your project with their in-house design teams. The goal of Rafter P Construction is to be your builder for life. Rafter P Construction, they'll be with you every step of the way to build your dream project all the while keeping quality and customer satisfaction at the forefront.